and welcome back. <laughs> what say? So we're probably going to want to put on the boots of blinding speed for this run. We're going to run all the way south to Neuchardoms. Alright, we're flying. Sure to attract the attention of numerous cliff walkers. Cliff racers. Oh, my acrobatics went up. That might be kind of a leveling strategy. Just get kind of high with levitate and fall. Haha. <laughs> get our acrobatics up. Maybe we can fall over this island? How far up can we be? before it starts to become like a real big issue for us. Ooh. About that far, huh? Let's go a little further. Is this high enough? And let's see. Acrobatics. 23, 23%. Yeah, it's not bad actually. Getting up pretty high and then falling really does raise your acrobatics. This might suck. How much was that one? 7%. Not really enough to matter, I guess, but still, not bad. We got quite the quite the ways to go. In real life, that's how people end up in wheelchairs. <laughs> yeah, depends how you land, but uh, yeah, sure is. Sure is. Did you hear that? I just heard the sound effect of like a a door rolling shut or something. What was that? It was like a weird sound cue. Like a stone. Hmm. Could just be Morrowind being Morrowind, of course. Oh, hola Mayan. We go there in the main quest, I believe. It's that hidden monk monastery. Oof. That's pretty. It's a pretty shot. I dig it. Okay, we're pretty much there. Yeah, this is a pretty little area. Without the cliff racers? Yeah, that must be the the monastery. And this must be Neutradoms. Looks like there's people outside. Although the quest did indicate there were necromancers here. Oh, this must be the woman Let's that's coming with us. Rivalries and talk, shall we? You look old as fuck! Seriously? The woman I'm escorting? Looks like Hillary Clinton. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. This might end up considerably harder than I was expecting. Hmm. Uh, Vita cocoa. Coconut water. High in potassium. I don't mind it when it's cold. <laughs> So I'm wondering, do I clear this out without her? And then come out and get her? Because I think that's the plan. I think that's the play, 100%. Oof, hate that sound. Well, 
one tapped them both, huh? Skull Crusher is kind of overpowered. Like, seriously. This thing's doing 10 to 60 one hand. And I think some of the strongest two handed weapons in the game are about 10 to 60. It's gross. Look at this. Is that glass? Yeah, raw glass. No shit. I don't think I've seen that. It's also not really lore acceptable, right? Because isn't glass armor and weapons made from malachite in this game? Shouldn't this be like a malachite ore? Some mod creator took some liberty there. Wow, this place is loaded with centurions. I suppose it's presuming that you have that woman with you. Oh, a centurion. We need to start making a tally of how many times I sneeze each stream. Oh, he took that hit. Nice. Good job, bro. Didn't take two of them, though. I believe we have the difficulty level. Yeah, it's on 40. Because we're level 40. We've just made such a tanky character at this point. Mold shield. Dwarven mace. Oh, it's a named spear. Constant effect. Fortify spear 10 points. Night eye 15 points. That's a very interesting thing to see just laying down here. Ilkarok. 6 to 22. Not bad. With two constant effect enchantments. Huh. Yeah, we'll take it. Nordic Iron Helm. Scroll of Healing. Looks like whoever this adventurer was, he just kind of lost stuff along the way, right? His helm, his gauntlet. Ancient Dwemer Door Key. Let's see if that becomes useful. Our key chest is going to be so... Stuffed. Oh, no, no. We gotta get out. I think that guy... is probably who her quest is to kill. Oh, my nose is itchy. Greetings to you. A pleasure to meet you. Explore together. I have scorned the world over hunting a specific Daedrith, with whom I have had issues in the past. When last we battled, I struck her a blow so grievous that she fled via spell to her dark sanctuary. This is that place. The beast's name is Hrelvesu. She is weak, and likely recuperating from the damage I caused her. This place is well defended, and I need someone to watch my back. You can have whatever treasure you find in there. I seek only vengeance. Okay, sure. I'll help you. I'm still poisoned, huh? Yep. Still very poisoned. Should I wait an hour? Oh! What the fuck? Oh, not the Dark Brotherhood. Oh, that's a disaster. For us. This round. These guys almost killed us. Oh my. That was awful. Not what I was expecting. The, uh, the poison damage they do with this uh, Jink Blade is absolutely insane. 
Sorry about that. <laughs> She's like, what the fuck? <laughs> what have I gotten myself into? Fortunately, they did not attack her because they would have killed her instantly. Is she coming with us? Alright. So everything in here should be dead for her. Which should make this quite a bit easier. And then, I don't know, maybe we electrocuted or something? I don't know if we want to contribute any damage to it at all. I don't want to accidentally kill it and then not get credit for the quest. Where is she? There she is. She's coming. She's got dialogue. Oh man. If you could kill him, that'd be great. She's trying to dispel off his healing over time, which is interesting. Interesting. You have been a worthy companion. Farewell, my friend. I like that she's fully voiced. Very unusual for Morwind. The Daedrith Ferelvesu is slain. I should report back to Harundi. Hm. I wonder if there's anything with the naming convention there. Do you require aid? Nice. She heals me. Cool. Silver War Axe. I will take his heart. Or her heart, I guess. Is there any diamonds in here? Are there, I suppose you say? Um... No. There's some glass. That's cool. Yeah, peace, Mogo. Thanks for dropping by. I will catch you later, I'm sure. Enjoy your day at work. Hopefully it goes well for you. got some new lighting. It's not going to make much of a difference probably right now. But we'll try that. There's a lot of sick loot in here. We can recall back, turn this in. your service, Outlander. There's got to be an easier way to Come, get in here. Outlander, <laughs> let us do business. I heard Lorania was pleased with your work. Here's the 500 septums I owe you for this contract. Nice. Nover Drethon has hired us to help him take care of some problems in the Disopla mine. Our client, the owner of the mine, is inside, northeast of the Dunmer stronghold Falen Serrano. 
which is on the mainland, west of Telerun. Do whatever Navarre says he needs doing. He said something about Nick Sounds. It's northeast of the Dunmer stronghold. All right, let's see. So it's like here. Interesting. Pleasure. Wow, okay. Definitely not the door to use. <laughs> this place is such a such a maze, holy shit. Okay. I don't go to this area of Sadrus more very often. I wonder what's up here. Just a bunch of mushroom houses. A monk, huh? Sorcerer. Oh yeah, she sells spells. Wow. Quite a few spells. Lightning storm. Cool. Summon Bone Lord. She also has a flame and a frost atronach. Nice. She must be Telvani, yeah. Huh. Wonder what this is. Probably a Telvani sorcerer place too. Yeah. Telvani Council House. So I'll have to go there at some point to join House Telvani. Okay, so we're looking to go in this direction here. We're gonna have to levitate over. I wonder if I'm going to get a point of alteration here soon. Maybe. I've been casting a lot of levitate. Alteration. I think I need one more point, and I leveled a level 41. Okay, so we're going west from here, and we're looking for a mine filled with Nyx hounds. Black heart blight, son of a bitch. So I have to heal myself with Vex Tears. There we go. There's got to be a mine around here somewhere. <laughs> I 
not what I'm looking for. Oh, there's an orgrim. This is looking kind of miney. Oh, I bet it's right here. Yep, found it. Alright, nice. We got it. Let's save here real quick. We can use some spirit knife in here. Whoa. There's like trees as you walk in. I'm pretty sure that that's not intentional. <laughs> Maybe it is. Maybe it's some uh, mod activity going awry. This mine belongs to the Emperor. Huh, so is can I... something I can do for you? So if I take it, is it illegal? Don't touch the raw glass or the guards will kill you. Huh. Oh shit. I wonder. I'm gonna save. And then we're gonna see if we can take yes, some. Yep. That's what I thought. Everyone instantly attacks me. Go ahead, Lander. <laughs> Under sun and sky, Outlander. We A pack of Nyx hounds was attacking my miners. We thought one of the miners was lost at first, but she turned up safe. Our healer, Terrace, went down to look for her and hasn't come back. Would you go down into the mines and bring back Terrace if he still lives? I would go myself, but I should stay here. Okay. So we're going to go deep into these mines. I have really bad luck with these boots. There we go. May I help you? What say you? There's a next sound. Dead. Should be able to just steal this glass, right? There's nobody here. Is it heavy? It's kinda heavy. It's a little heavy. Damn, this is so much gold. If I was like hard up for gold, this would be amazing. How much glass is that? 45 glass at 200 gold each is what, 9,000 gold almost? Wow. There he is. Travel together. Follow me. Okay. Let's see if you can get down the stairs. They seem tricky. Sarah. Thank you. There we go. Journal updated. 
I guided Terrace Erethin back to the mine entrance. Alright. So the hardest part of that quest was definitely finding the mine. It took me a little while. Diamond mines near Caldera would be better to farm some gold. Higher profit and way less weight. Hey, Vigarth. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have, uh... I have 377,635 gold. <laughs> and then I also have all this Dark Brotherhood crap in my inventory right now. Which will, um... Sell for a fortune, also. But, I'm just saying. It's... It's a good amount of gold. Yeah, it's heavy, though. Two pounds apiece. It's, uh... It's a lot. And it's not particularly useful as an alchemical ingredient <laughs> because of uh, all the negative effects it has, so I'll probably just end up selling it. Yeah, gold is always good. Cash is king. Alright, we should be able to just recall back and then do a little bit of teleporting and turn this quest in. How are you doing today, Vigarth? At your service, Outlander. Sounds like everything went well. It did. Advancement. Boom. Jokri the Guardian. We're killing it. There's a creature loose in Berwyn, the trader shop in Telmora. There's 2, uh, 200 septums for whoever takes care of this corpus stalker. Oh, so it's a double quest. There's a corpus stalker, and there's an outlaw. Interesting. He was last seen near Vos. Hmm. I'll probably have to ask around town. Hmm. I think that's the wrong door. Okay, let's run down to the boat. We'll go to Telmora. Kill this Corpus Stalker. How did she manage to get a Corpus Stalker in her shop? Seems like a weird thing to let in. Probably go to our local map. There it is. Pretty much right in front of us. So is it this one? There it is. Alright, we'll save. Just so we don't get one shot by a corpus stalker. <laughs> oh yeah. Full up. We'll just kill it with a ranged attack, probably, right? We can spirit knife it. Hmm. There we go. Hit it. Did it dispel itself? Oh, it tried to. Didn't work. Sorry, buddy. Corpus Weavings. Ugh. The, the model was pretty cool. They did a nice job with it. With the, uh, these updated Morwen models. I like the, uh, 
The facial expression, too, it's pretty... Ugh. Nice. I wonder if we can rob her of some of her stuff while we're here. See what's in this chest, for example. If we can open it. Fifty-seven gold. Well, that increases our reward slightly. Can we not even jump on top of these crates? <laughs> Our acrobatics is so bad. Hello, Berwin. Corpus Stalker. We were able to trap it upstairs, but no one wants to risk disease by getting close to it. Normally, Master Arian would take care of it, but he's been so busy. Sure, done. And how are you? Can I help you? I wonder if I say it again if it updates my journal. It does. You obviously have great skill. Ha! <laughs> Thank you. Alright, so now Vos, which I believe is just north of here. What do you want, Hmm. Water walking? Yeah, that's Vos. And we'll have to ask around town about this outlaw. See if we can find out any more information. See if he's in town, or if he's on the outskirts or something. Wonder what this place is up here. Trade house, lock level 6. Hmm, okay. Weird to have that be locked. Also weird that me sneaking here doesn't have me invisible. So we'll use the Amulet of Shadows. Put our Necromancer Amulet back on. Telvani Counselor and Mage Lord. Hmm. Okay, so we're looking for Rel's Tenem. Check with some of the local farmers. Okay. Well, at least that points me in the right direction. This is Rat Hostile. Maybe it's a pet rat. Huh. This rat doesn't seem to want to kill me. Okay, let's go outside and see if we can find some farmers. Maybe there's somebody at a little farm outside the city. I've never really looked. Looks like there's a Kwama egg mine down there. But I don't see a farm. What about this guy? Three blessings, Sarah. He's a bandit. He stole some guar and some crops. I don't know where he is now, but the Ahamusa might. Check at the Ahamusa camp north of here. Interesting. The plot thickens. I think... Hmm. Okay. A winged twilight randomly. Not great. 
It's poison flasker. Light armor increased. Nice. We can electrocute her, maybe. Nope. She reflected it or absorbed it. There we go. Let's minor renew ourselves. Damn. That was random. <laughs> to get attacked by a winged twilight in the middle of nowhere. They're super dangerous. They have so much health. It's wild. Gotta be something in the grass I can't see. There it is. A rat. Wow. She has a really bad disposition with me. Let's try to charm her. 71, a little bit better. Rel's Tenon. A man went to the cavern of Shalit on a small island southwest of Ald Daedrith. He left for the night when neither Masa nor Secunda could be seen. Perhaps this is the man you seek. Island southwest of Ald Daedrith. Wow, that's pretty far north. Damn. So right here, maybe? Hmm. We might have to do some water walking. This is turning into quite the quest. The guy is essentially just like, Hey, go to Telmora and kill this corpus stalker, and while you're there... <laughs> find this bandit. Except the bandit isn't even remotely close. He's at the end of the earth. North side of an island, southwest of Ald Daedrith. I think that's specific enough we can find it. Maybe we cast some lightning bolts at them. So maybe it's this island? Although I don't think that's shallot. Maybe it is. Nope, that's a Kwama egg mine. Cetus. But maybe it's at the north of this island. It's this thing. Sonny. No. Close, though. There's something right there, but I don't think that's it either. North side of the island.
maybe it's like here. Hardest part of these Morrowind quests is finding out where to go. Maybe it's this island. Maybe that's it. That would be convenient. That's hidden as hell. God damn. Haha. We found it. Save here. Level forty one. All right. I like this uh, visual storytelling here. Let's see what the note says. Giddin, here's a blade for the new man. Send him ahead and we'll set up his arrangements. Dinner is waiting, but not for you. Move Relia is sick again, so you've drawn sentry duty. Don't worry, you'll be getting a portion of his share. Stay alert. Bounty hunters are seeking us, but I feel fairly secure up here. I'm back, <laughs> listening only though. Hey, Mogo. You got a short commute to work, that's nice. Should probably turn up my, uh, my light here. It's interesting to have this kind of staircase in here, and these pillars. Almost looks like this was an ancient kind of shrine of some some sort. I'm surprised it's been so empty. 275 gold, nice. We'll probably sleep off this poison. Oh, a grand soul gem. Oh, we needed one of those real bad. Nice. Next golden saint we find. And we can uh, enchant our helm, finally. It'll be the last piece of our armor we have to enchant. Oh man, look how much health that... Uh, <laughs> that poison took from us. God damn, that was a bad one. Okay, we healed ourselves back to full. Drithon Ancestral Tomb. Yeah, so it's some kind of tomb deep in here. That's kind of cool. Oh, vampires. 
dying. Oh damn, she's got a ton of health. Are you kidding me? Marara. Might have to poison flask her. Oh, that's tearing through her though. Oh, she's hitting me super hard. Whoa. God damn. Marara's ring, 22,000 gold with three constant effects. Reflect 20%, which is how she reflected my poison flask. That's awesome. Fortify acrobatics and, get this, resist normal weapons 40%. Yikes. My necromancer's amulet here is resist normal weapons 25%. So I guess if you had them both, I don't know how the math works, but um, would I be 65% resistant to normal weapons wearing these together? With a 25 points of spell absorption and 25% reflect, I would barely be taking any kind of magic damage. That would be a gross combo. Right now I'm using Dense Stagmer's ring, because I like the... Um, it adds, it would be 65%. Hey, the gray count. Thanks for uh, for chiming in. So it's additive. I almost feel like that would be better than Den Stagmer's ring. I feel like 20% to reflect is better than 30% to resist. Because that would essentially be just a 20% chance to like not take the damage at all and put it back on the original caster. Especially when you add the resist normal weapons. Hmm. Wow, that's a really strong weapon from some, like, crazy high-level vampire I accidentally happened upon. <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering if Marara's ring would be the play. I do have to stick with uh, the Mogadon band here because of the Bound Shield, the Night Eye, and the Constant Effect Restore Health, and I really want all those things. The Night Eye is especially important for streaming because it's sometimes hard to see in these dark areas for you guys. But um, I definitely think Marara's ring could be better than Dent Stagmer's ring. Hmm. I think so. Hey, Gretzky. Nope. Took the wrong ring off. It's all good. Yeah, yeah, in Oblivion too, in the old days, it wasn't really that hard to get like a 100% reflect. You needed like two or three items, really, that you could find relatively easy around the game world. So it makes sense that in Morrowind you'd be able to, to stack those kind of things too. Uh, but yeah, that's, I mean, that's freaking strong. The combination of, uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ob Oblivion um, definitely limited the number of like rings and stuff you could wear for sure. But you could still easily get 100% Reflect and Oblivion with, I think, three items. Um, not to mention, you know, spell making and everything else that you could you could do, and some of the cool Sigil Stone enchantments and stuff like that. But yeah, no, this is a really strong combo. Necromancer's Amulet, Marara's Ring. I'm already so goddamn tanky, right? I already have, like, well over 130 armor when I'm repaired. Yeah, that's when, um, that's when I played. I haven't seriously played Morrowind Gretzky in, like... 22 years. It's it's literally been, I think, 22, 21 years since I've played this game. I did do a little bit of a playthrough in, like, 2017, but I only did a few things. Um, it wasn't, like, a real deep dive. So this is my first time really getting into Morrowind um, since I was fucking young, since, like, 2001, 2002. I know, and look at this. Look what I bought on Amazon. The original strategy guide, I had one of these, these this Prima strategy guide, I had this in like 2001, and I used to sit with this on my, uh, on my lap with my little Xbox controller playing, playing Morrowind. Oh, it's, it's pretty good, yeah, I mean, it's a little, it's a little worn, and, uh, I've, uh, 
done a lot of writing inside <laughs> a bunch of different you know things of, of where to find them and where to look and i'm using a freaking fifty dollars lowe's gift card as a <laughs> as a bookmark but yeah no i uh i'm on this whole nostalgia trip right now with this Yeah, yeah, the multiplayer mods are really cool. Skyrim has one that um, I was thinking about checking out, but never ended up actually checking out. I have 196 mods on this playthrough, uh, mostly graphical, but um, it's been stable. In about 70 hours of this Let's Play so far, I've only crashed twice, and one of them was my fault. So really, one crash to desktop isn't too bad at all. But I'm I'm worried I'm, I'm going to be too tanky. I've turned the difficulty level up. Um, substantially. I'm putting it up one difficulty level every time I gain a level. I should actually put it up to 41 now. There we go. Um, so the difficulty slider just keeps going further and further to the right, you know? Um, and yet I still don't feel like a lot of enemies are pressuring me that much between my insane armor rating, my 84 block with a Daedric bound shield, which also fortifies my block, this insane scroll, skull crusher mace that does two-handed damage with a one-hander, and now I'm like practically immune to physical damage <laughs> i'm reflecting i'm absorbing i have constant effect restore health coming out the ass it's gross this this character is getting getting tanky ring of fireballs well that seems really underwhelming compared to the ring we just got <laughs> The Skyrim one is not well coded. Yeah, OpenMW is really cool. I'm not using it for this playthrough because I found OpenMW much more difficult to mod, and the original, huh? The original Morrowind engine is super simple to mod. I put 196 mods into this bad boy like fucking nothing, just boom into the data file, good to go. Where OpenMW would have taken me 20 extra hours to put this many mods onto it, so. I decided not to not to do that. Shia Gorad region, really? This goes out? That's bizarre. Okay, so I need to find Dude, some of these graphics are incredible, dude. Like at night when I'm in Vivek, it looks incredible. Um how the game looks, but even here, just like midday, you got the clouds moving over the sky, the water has nice ripples and reflections, and uh, dynamic shadows, bloom lighting. I mean, I know this this game looks with with mods like this isn't this isn't vanilla, obviously, but with mods, it's looking it's looking good. Look at the look at the sun like the sun shafts and stuff that come through. I know it's not bad. Not bad. And, uh, like, everything has updated, like, 2K, sometimes 4K resolution textures and stuff. It definitely shows its age in some places. Like, inside, um, inside here, look at these walls, right? Look at this. Look at this wall texture. Tell me if that doesn't scream 2001 to you, right? <laughs> uh, but, yeah, no, the game's come a long way. The fire might even have, like, an updated texture on it, a little bit of smoke and stuff coming off of it. It's not bad. Now this this place called Shalit is supposed to have a bunch of outlaws in it, and I'm supposed to murder them with extreme prejudice, but I have not been able to find anybody. I found a tomb with a high-level vampire accidentally. Do I have to levitate? Oh, I bet I have to levitate. Is there something up there? Shit. Three-dimensionality, man. I never think of it. Is there like a levitation potion over here? Oh shit, there's a diamond. Mage ring. I have um seven of those scrolls that unlock 100 points on target. That's nutty. I have seven of them now. The strongest locks in the game I can just blast open with a scroll. Alright, um, so we're going up there. You guys might not even be able to see that very well, but... 
Yeah, so um, I had to work really hard on the faces for this particular game. It was a lot of a lot of mods that I had to put on, and um, my female orc didn't end up too bad in, in the face department. Once you know, I got everything kind of nice and modded. It's it's not horrible. <laughs> it could be ten times worse, but um, I don't know. Some of the characters I see are still still pretty rough. Okay, let's levitate up there. I alphabetized all of my spells so that they're easy to find by school. A for alteration, C for conjuration, D for destruction, I for illusion, R for restoration. So this would be an A's alteration levity. Alright, we up there. Aha, is this what I'm looking for? A worn cavern door. Hello. Are you friendly? Or am I going to have to poison flask you? I have you. Oh, nope, not friendly. That'll kill her dead, though. Oh, yeah. Now you die. Get wrecked. Stupid. Get wrecked. Fiend Badlax. It's worth 9,000 gold. It's heavy as fuck, though. Fuck it, we'll take it. We got a little bit of room left in our inventory. Yeah, the Face of God spell is uh, Bound Helm for 60 seconds, Bound Bad Lex for 60 seconds. It's one of the ones I... Actually, I, technically I've made all of these spells. But... Ooh, get juked. Ah, shit, he hit me with that one. Ooh. Poisoned. You're dead. You're fucked. And then we'll go ahead and healing wave ourselves. Cool. Steel Staff of Shaming. Hard to say. That's a tongue twister. What are all these potions you got over here? Oh, we got a chest too. Scroll of Healing. Bunch of garbage. Take the soul gem. Rising force. I could have used that down below. We can unlock this. Lesser open lock. Yeah, sometimes it's Garbo. This got 392 gold, though. That's a chonky chest. That's pretty good. We'll take it. Although we did just get an axe worth 9,000 gold. I'm gonna save here, actually. I don't want to get clapped by one of these guys and lose 20 minutes of... <laughs> of play. I wonder if I can Kobe Bryant this dude. Hit him from downtown. Mm, spirit knife. I wonder if this is gonna hit the fireplace. It might. Oh, there's two of them. Alright, we're spirit knifing this guy. Got him. In the face. Close the door. I heard him summon a greater bone walker. Get the fuck out of here. He's dead. Let's see if we can hit her too. Nope. This is gonna interact. That's okay. Maybe we can sneak up behind her and get a crit on her. She's not paying attention to us. My sneak increased to 55. Oh, the dream. It's gonna happen. There is no Woo! escape! That's a big sword, lady. Chill. Chill, chill, chill. I didn't mean it. Oof. <laughs> Fucked. You going for all 100s? Um, for skills? No. Probably not. That's interesting. Why did my intellect drop so much lower? What did I lose? Or did something get too damaged? Hmm. My intellect should be almost 140. I'm wondering. I 
have to figure that out later. Um, let's see. I, I don't know. Like my max level for this character would be 74 if I got every major and minor skill up to 100, which seems exorbitant, right? I'm already level 41, which seems super high for this game. Um, so I don't necessarily know. My restoration will definitely get to 100. I'm getting up there. My light armor, destruction, and block will all get to 100 eventually just by virtue of me playing. But some of these skills, like armor, I've gotten to 45 and I'm constantly repairing my gear. It just levels so slow. I guess I can give a demonstration. Right now I'm 61% of the way to level 46 armor. 61%. So let's take an armor hammer and repair all my shit. Cool. Everything's repaired. I am now at 81%. So I, I just got 20% of a level by using two armorer's hammers to repair everything in my inventory, including, like, a bunch of shit I'm not even wearing, just crap that I've picked up. It's so long. I have to do that five times to gain one level. So um, the fact that I've even gotten it from, like, 30 to 45 is really impressive. <laughs> but I don't see myself ever getting that to 100. I would have to train it. Um, I just, I, I'm 60 hours, almost 65 hours into this Let's Play, and my alteration is level 45. I'd have to play for like 400 fucking hours to get this to 100, and I am routinely repairing my gear. Yes, yeah, I, I'm aware you can do that. Um, you can do a lot of fun things with that. Um, but yeah, you can, in Oblivion especially, you can do a spell that drains your armor skill 100 points, and then you can, you know, repair armor and, and gain a lot more levels, and then when the spell wears off, you, uh, you get to keep all those kind of free level ups you got. But I do not have a drain skill spell. I think there might be one in Mornhold, um, for Morrowind, but base Morrowind actually doesn't have one. Oblivion does, although you have to jump through some hoops to find it. Um, and alteration too, right? I'm at level 55 alteration. I'm constantly casting, levitate, water walking, water breathing, um, and it's only 55. I think the math says you need to cast an alteration spell successfully around 30,000 times to get to level 100. So, um, yeah, that's a lot of cast. Yeah, in Oblivion too. In Oblivion, get this, restoration, to get it from 10 to 100 requires 34,000 successful heal casts. 34,000! Whereas in Oblivion, Conjuration, to go from 100, uh, from go to 10 to 100, requires 1,800 successful conjures. So 1,800 is a lot better than 34,000. You can level your Conjuration just by running around town spam casting skeleton, you know? But Restoration, you can run around spam casting all you want, it's going to take four fucking ever. Oh, get this. In Morwind, to get Athletics, which is down here, to get Athletics from 10 to 100 requires 96 hours of running. Real-life hours. 96 hours. It requires 70 hours of swimming. So I could get in the water, <laughs> like tape my controller frickin' joystick in the forward position, and go to work and come home. And I would gain, over the course of those 10 hours, I'd gain like 7 fucking levels of athletics. Like, it's wild. Morwind and Oblivion are fucking wild in terms of leveling skills, which I'm not even saying I dislike. I, I think Skyrim is much more action than RPG. Um, Daggerfall is uh, particularly punishing if you get a character that's not advantaged, if you get a very disadvantaged character. Um, but either way, leveling skills, super hard. Am I going to get them all to 100? No. Enchant, I don't even fucking know how I would get this to 100. I'd have to constantly be using soul gems and like enchanting shit items. Like this one would be AIDS. I would have to, I don't know why I chose it as a minor skill. I was not thinking when I made this character. Like I said, it's been about 20 years since I played Morwind. I was thinking more along the lines of uh, Skyrim, like uh, how easy it would be to level enchanting. Not the fucking case. <laughs> so, I don't know. Uh, but restoration, light armor, destruction, and block will all hit 100. Armor might get close. I'll probably just end up having to train if I care enough to, to technically max the character out. Max out my Orc Shaman. I have been enchanting every piece of armor with intelligence. 
and then I always put a range, and then I can just take it on, put it back on again, you know, take it off, put it back on, until I get the maximum of all the ranges I want. And then you can see it here, right? I got three for Greaves, four for Curus, three for Bracer, three for Bracer, two for Striders, 25 for Necklace. So, pretty badass. That's giving me a mana pool that for an orc is pretty high. 334. Alright, anyway, what are we doing? We're robbing people. Is this the name Tells? So neither of these are the guy I'm looking for. I'm looking for Rel's Tenem. Oh, okay. That makes sense. I would need all those soul gems. I guess I'd need an Azura Star, right? I'd have to go and, and get Azura Star out of the way. Which I have not done yet. Uh, so far in this Let's Play, my reputation's all the way up to 47 now. I finished the Temple. I'm the Patriarch. I finished the Imperial Cole. I'm the Primate. I finished the Imperial Legion. I'm Knight of the Imperial Dragon. And I finished the Mage's Guild. I'm the Archmage. Right now I'm doing Fighter's Guild. Um... And I'm second to highest, I think, Guardian. Need one skill at 80 and two skills at 30. So I think there's two levels above Guardian. So I'm almost top of the Fighter's Guild. I'm getting there. Let's open both of these bad boys. They're both trapped, and I don't think I have a probe on me. I do not, so I'm going to have to eat both of these traps. Reflected, get fucked. That one hit me. Ooh, that one hit me hard. We're gonna have to heal. Okay, we're good. Leveling skills in Oblivion, it's actually not terrible depending on the skill. But some skills, Restoration is probably the worst. Restoration and Athletics are fucking absurd in Oblivion. They are absurd. Um, everything else, there's cheeky kind of things to do, like armor, for example. There's there's tricks, right? But there's no fucking trick for athletics, and there is no trick for restoration. <laughs> you just suffer through both of those. It's just suffering. Look at this fucking chest. What? We got an ebony war axe worth 15,000 gold. We got black pearl, two diamond, an emerald, 348 gold. And we have a enchanted chest. That's nuts. I don't think I'm going to take the axe, because it just weighs too much. Unless I want to swap it out for something. Which I don't. So I'll probably just leave it there. But these are some chonky chests, man. Actually, I actually have to do a new save game at this point. Joffrey level 41. We're getting there. Without leaving the island in Lake Rumere? Oh man. That's brutal. I remember the old days of Oblivion, like 2008-ish, where I'd go to like some little basement and um, with a bunch of rats, and I would just sit there getting hit, you know, and get my light armor, medium armor, heavy armor up, get my block up. Um, and just kind of keep healing myself through it all, and I could I could just kind of sit there and let things just attack me to, to gain all those kind of levels. I remember wedging myself underneath this staircase in, like, Bruma, and just um, jumping and jumping and jumping and jumping and jumping. And because my character was, like, glitched under the staircase, you didn't have to go through the whole animation. It's just every time you hit the button, you'd essentially jump, and you could level athletics, uh, sorry, acrobatics that way. And I, I remember doing all that shit, too, yeah. I remember having... I remember if you held the block button and you cast a spell, the spell casts like 70% faster than if you were to just cast a spell randomly. So I would run around holding block and then spamming low level like light spells, muffle spells, low level shield spells, just to constantly, as I was running around the world, level up all my magic skills. So, yeah, I remember the old days. The old days on console with no console commands or mods or anything. I remember, um... In doing alchemy, I'd go to like an alchemist and I'd buy out their inventory for like 800 gold, and then I'd make potions out of everything I could possibly make a potion out of, and then I'd sell the potions back for like 700 gold, and you could essentially level alchemy for free 
if you knew, you know, what to make and, and how to combine different ingredients just by clearing out vendors, making everything you could and selling the potions back to them. Fun stuff. And Morrowind, of course, has a lot of those tricks, too. Alchemy was the first thing that I hit 100 with on this playthrough, because um, I know what to do, I know what to make, I know what, what's powerful, and I know how to uh, kind of abuse the vendor restocks, and I was able to make some absurdly powerful potions and sell them for a lot of money. Here in my inventory, I have my, uh, my mana potions. What's one of my stronger ones? This one's really strong. Restore 24 points of magic a second for 64 seconds. That's like 1,800 mana. That's nuts. Essentially, for a minute, I can't run out of mana. <laughs> for like a minute straight, I can just cast whatever the fuck I want. Oh, you're cheesing. Well, you know what was really cheesy is the using scrolls or arrows to duplicate things. That's probably the, the cheesiest thing you could do. <laughs> but yeah, no, there's, there's cheese in the game. Yeah, this might be the guy we're looking for. Let's hit him with a spirit knife, and then see if maybe we can paralyze him. Okay, we got him. Stasis. Got him. Oh, fuck. We can poison flask him. Or electrocute. Wait, let's just electrocute him. And then run. Those will kill him. Those will kill him. Get fucked. Two middle fingers. You know what comes next. You know what comes next. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so he's got a Devil Katana, which is actually pretty cool. Those are very powerful, early game. If you're like level 1 or 2 and you can get a Demon or a Devil Weapon, mm, easy mode. It, it uh, fortifies your, your skill substantially, like at least 10 points. And then you have a Daedric Weapon, which weighs nothing because it's bound costs no fatigue when you swing it because it weighs nothing and you have um, you have 10 points of fortification for whatever the um, the weapon type is ooh that's sun ooh it's blasting me blasting me all right but I'm level 41 and I do not need that weapon so <laughs> it's a great weapon to get early game though ooh I wonder what skill book this is sermon 32 any guesses? Anyone want to guess what skill this is? I'm going to say... Heavy armor. Block! Oh, I was kind of kind of tossing up between block and heavy armor. Because the guy here had full, full heavy armor and a shield, so I was thinking maybe one of the two. Okay. We've struck a bargain with evil. While I am uncomfortable and feel some unease with our current arrangement, I believe these warrens will serve us well for some time. Those who hope to destroy me must be of stout spirit and cunning mind, for if they simply forge ahead in these caves, they may meet a fate far worse than death. I think what he's talking about is that nasty-ass fucking vampire I just ran into that reflected my poison flask and almost killed me. When we first discovered these caves and began our explorations, we were sure we had found refuge from our enemies. Little did we know as we pushed into the interior galleries what we would find. In the final chamber, we came upon the ruined portal to a vast tomb. At first, we were eager to chance upon some riches to fill our coffers, but instead we found ourselves within the nest of deadly creatures. By our wits and skill for arms, we were able to retreat from their dark lair. For a time, we sealed the entry, but the threat continued to gnaw at us. It was Giddon who conceived the plan which we presented to those beings of darkness. In return for our right to dwell within these caves, we provide sustenance for these creatures. They assist us in this venture. We have created a lure, a path for the bounty hunters and meddlesome folk to follow. The unwary will find themselves in the clutches of a black fate. Move Relia is very unhappy with the current conditions, and I am finding myself concurring. This cannot come to a good end, but we must stay the course until a new safe hold can be found. So they actually allied themselves with the vampires. That's very interesting. Longblade skill book. Boom. Got it. And they have all the rising force potions to get up to their little lair. I like it. I like the um, the storytelling for this quest. Oh, speak of the devil, my legs just went up too. 90 more hours, boys. <laughs> we can get that to 100. <laughs> Uh, 
Well, that was a dog shit chest. A Daedric Katana in there. With a diamond? I guess we'll take it for now, even though it's heavy as fuck. Iron Viper Skewer. Alright. We did what we wanted to do. We actually banged out both quests, and our inventory is absolutely <laughs> fucking bursting. So it's time to go back and uh, turn these quests in. What we can actually do first is go to our player house and um, store some of the stuff we want to store, just to get a little of this weight off of us. Oh, greetings! How do you do? We're so freaking slow <laughs> with 450 pounds on us. Oh, um, while we're here, let me show you, um, I did a ton of face mods, right? And other things. And look at Galbadoo. I have a feeling you and I are about to become very close. Right? She's cute. She's cute. It's a good job. Like, the faces aren't too bad. And look, she's got, like, uh, she's got butterflies in her hair and shit. Which is, you know, a nice touch, I think. So, yeah, with enough mods, the, the Morwen faces aren't, aren't horrifying. You just gotta, you gotta mod the crap out of your game. I'm very happy Here's Rannis. She's got an eight head, but other than that, not, uh, not terrible. It's all about the mods. <laughs> so what I did for a player house in this Let's Play is I, um, killed everyone inside the Balmora Council Club, because you pretty much have to anyway for two different quests, and I took it over as my house. So I have my Dwemer Shrine, I have my Umbra Shrine for my epic fight with Umbra. I have my Daedric Shrine in the corner where I put my Ash Statues and Dagoth Cups and all my uh, different stuff over there. I have my little Daedric Weapon area. Here's all the cool stuff I found over my playthrough. Got our Staff of Magnus and we got our Chrysomir and everything like that. Lord's Mail, Ebony Mail, Boots of the Apostle, yada yada. Got my little Grandmaster Alchemy area. It's been fun. So let's put all of our gems in here. We're up to 31 diamonds now, which is wild that I've been able to get that many. We're going to put all of our ingredients in here. So whenever we make potions, we have everything we need. I don't know what the uh, weight limit for this chest is, but we're probably getting getting up there. Hey Gretzky, if you're still here, are you um are you gonna play the next World of Warcraft expansion? The reboot that they're doing. I think it's coming out this fall, and I've been wondering if I'm going to play it myself. I think uh, Brandon and Kelly are going to play, and I think Brandon is leading the old guild that we made. So that would be a nice easy home for us. I don't know, I've been considering looking into it. Alright, we got our got Ebony here. Put our books away. And then everything else more or less just has to be sold. We can put our keys away. I kind of want to see a remaster where it still has all the same mechanics but just has newer graphics. I mean, yeah. And they're doing that, right? They're doing um, Sky Oblivion and Sky Wind. They're, they're making both Morrowind and Oblivion in the Skyrim engine. It looks pretty good. The problem is those uh, those games are just so slow to develop. They've been working on those for fucking forever. Like seven years now, you know? I don't know. I think um, they're looking for... I believe Skywind is talking about a 2025 release, so potentially next sometime next year. 
but after doing this huge, you know, 100 hour let's play right now with, with all these mods that make the game look okay, I don't know if I'd even play it. I might, but I might not. Sky Oblivion would be cool though. I'm actually going to do an Oblivion let's play once this one's done with the exact same character. Same build, same major and minor skills, all of it. I'm going to try to go through Morwind, um, Oblivion, Skyrim, and maybe Daggerfall, all with this Orc Shaman character. It's a it's a big uh, it's a big project. I don't know if I'll end up ever actually finishing it, but maybe we can put this uh, spear right here if we have room. Yeah, that works. It's a cool spear. And then at this point, we just have to sell all our shit. I think Morrowind deserved a remaster forever ago. Like, they remastered Dark Souls, right? Interesting. An Oblivion remake would be cool. Um, I, A, have not heard anything about it, and B, why would they remake Oblivion but not, not Morrowind or Daggerfall? I feel like... Morrowind is a much better game. <laughs> Morrowind's like a 10 out of 10 game. Oblivion's like an 8 out of 10 game. Skyrim's like a 6 out of 10 game, right? If they want to start remaking Elder Scrolls games, they should probably start at the beginning. I think an arena remake would be amazing with uh, uh, Jaggerthorn. And uh, a Daggerfall remake could be so cool. Yeah, uh, Todd Howard's part of the problem. Starfield... Um, indicates that as well. So did Fallout 76, which suck, fucking sucked, right? Fallout 4 also wasn't very good. Todd Howard has not made a good game in 13 years, and I will die on that hill. I will die on that hill. I mean, imagine thinking back in 2000 that this is where Bethesda would head. We had Arena, Daggerfall, and Morrowind all back-to-back -back with like three years separating each one of them, which was fucking crazy. With Fallout 1, 2, and 3, and New Vegas all back-to-back-to-back, -to -back -to -back, Bethesda could do no wrong. Everything they made was a fucking banger. They were incredible. Um, then they had the Doom games and, and everything else. Like, they just made incredible games one after another after another. And then Skyrim hit, and Skyrim was mid completely mid. Vanilla Skyrim's a mediocre fucking game. It requires 2,000 mods for Skyrim to feel fucking incredible. And they just milked Skyrim for the next 13 years. And they, they released a shitty Fallout game, then they released an absolutely atrocious Fallout MMO, and then they re-released Skyrim four more fucking times, delaying the new Elder Scrolls over and over and over again. And then Starfield, they worked for 20 years on, seven years of actual development, and it was dog shit. One of the worst games I've ever played. I'd rather play Mass Effect 4, which was probably the worst Mass Effect. And still more fun than Starfall. No, man. Uh, Bethesda's dead. It's over. It's over. The Elder Scrolls Online did a, a decent job, but that's in spite of Bethesda, not because of Bethesda. Zenimax, um, Zenimax really killed it with that game. And it's gotten better and better and better. And that's because Bethesda's been so hands-off about it. <laughs> Starflop. What an awful game. What else can we sell? Yeah, he'll buy skooma from us. Thank you, Creeper. And then let's see if we can maybe sell some of these daggers. Oh, we can sell the two Jink Blades, actually. For sure. Anything else that's shitty? There's that Ring of Fireball, right? Yeah. 
Fiend Badlax, I forgot about that. We need to sell that too. That's heavy. Yes. Fallout 4's promotional material absolutely indicated that the game was going to be mediocre. I didn't hate Fallout 4. In the same way I didn't hate Skyrim, right? But you could tell that they were they were soulless, almost action oriented clones of the previous games, right? Morrowind has so much soul and atmosphere, so does Daggerfall, really. And then Oblivion was just bleh. It was okay. It was okay, but you lost so much between Morrowind and Oblivion. And then I was thinking with Skyrim that they were going to go back to, to Morrowind's atmosphere, Morrowind's writings, um, Morrowind's build potential, huge world, and they didn't. They they doubled down on the action RPG kind of formula, and they removed almost every role-playing element out of the Elder Scrolls when they made Skyrim. There's no fucking governing attributes anymore. You don't level skills the same way. It's uh, it's pretty awful. And they did the same thing with Fallout, right? Uh, Fallout became much more action-oriented rather than roleplay-oriented, and I think the game suffered for it. It wasn't terrible. It just wasn't good. So Fallout 76 was fucking terrible. And I'd say Starfield was terrible. I'd use the word terrible. We need 4,000 gold worth of stuff, so two darts, I suppose. Here we go. Yes, with every game, they make it more action, less RPG. As if they don't know where they came from, and, and what made them popular in the first place. These huge, open-world, super-rich RPGs are what Bethesda based their brand on. And every year, they've doubled down on action, and they've um, they've shorted us on roleplay. And that's why I have, I have no real hope for the next Elder Scrolls game. And the guy who's writing... The Elder Scrolls 6 is the same lead writer from Starfield. <laughs> it's like, can you fire these people, please? Well, honestly, Todd Howard just needs to go. He's a dinosaur at this point. I thank him for his contribution. He's done well enough with Bethesda, but they've sold to Microsoft now, and he just needs to go retire somewhere and let somebody with passion, especially for role-playing games, take the, take the wheel. They need to stop relying on the mod community to make their games decent, too. Real sad state of affairs, to be honest. Um, real sad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, and he's he's done exactly that, right? They've massively simplified the game between Morrowind and Oblivion, and then they massively simplified the game between Oblivion and Skyrim, even more so. Um... Man, imagine if Oblivion had been made more like Morrowind. It would have been an incredible game. There's like two parts of Oblivion that were well written. <laughs> you know, the Shivering Isles expansion was fantastic, and the Dark Brotherhood was fantastic. And the rest of the game was kind of written like shit. Imagine if Oblivion had gotten the care and creativity that Morrowind had. It would have been an incredible game instead of an okay game. And Skyrim, god, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> Vanilla Skyrim is so bad. It's so bad. <laughs> it's really up to the player to make Skyrim a fun game. Which you can certainly do. Correct. I, that's that's a big part of the problem. It was, I think, part of the problem too is that they had made this deal with Microsoft that they really wanted Oblivion to be a technical, like, example for what the Xbox 360 could do graphically in terms of its physics, and there was a huge emphasis put on Oblivion in terms of its technical aspects. And to that end, they did a fantastic job. The game was super cutting edge when it came out. Right? You could take a skull pick it up, drop it down a hill, and it would roll all the way down the hill, interacting with different things on the way down. Shadows are all dynamic. Oblivion was crazy for the time period, right? Um, and it definitely stretched the wings of the Xbox 360. And I think it was an awesome, like, technical demo for the console, and that's clearly what Microsoft wanted out of it. Uh, but at what cost, right? <laughs> Beautiful technological game. Uh, that lost a lot of the charm and soul and wit of Morwind. Not worth it, in my opinion.
but you could see what um, Microsoft wanted Oblivion to be, for sure. Also, Oblivion made the, the cardinal error, the original sin, of the horse armor microtransaction, and look where we, <laughs> look where we are now in terms of microtransactions in gaming. That really did start with Oblivion. Yeah, it could have been even more technologically sophisticated if it had started as a PC game. For sure. Although I don't mind that they made it for console. Okay, so we're done selling shit. I'm just going to put the Daedric um, Katana in here. It is worth 50,000 gold, but it would take forever to sell, and I don't need the gold exactly. We're at 430,000. We're going to save here. And then last thing I want to do before I end this episode is I actually want to go train Restoration a couple times in Vos. I think it's in Vos. So let's run on over and do that. This episode's gone long. We're at an hour and a half. I try to keep these about an hour each, but sometimes they go long. I had one episode I was almost four hours the other day. Whoops. Yeah, look at the sky. Gretzky, if you're still here, look at the sky. And by the way, the, the moons are dynamic, too. <laughs> at different times, uh, they, they're they at different positions relative to one another. Yeah, the skybox mods are really cool. We got like a green aurora over there, and you can see a lot of the um, constellations that are super important in the Morrowind lore are up there. These constellations actually became Skyrim perks, which I suppose is cool. Yeah, but that's that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy for like a 22-year-old game, what they were able to do with the mods. By the way, Gretzky, I don't think you heard me before. Are you um are you planning on playing the next WoW expansion? Because I don't know if I'm going to buy it or not, but I think Brandon and Kelly are playing it. So I'm wondering if I should pre-order or something. And I think it's Telmoro. Your actions precede you, Adlan. I've heard good things about you. I'll play it with you as long as you play anything but a BM hunter. Yeah, War Within. That's it. I've hated that season of Discovery. I don't even play at all anymore. I liked the first phase. I tolerated the second phase, but um, I quit before phase three, and everything I've heard about phase three supports my decision to not continue to play it. <laughs> Man, I don't know what Blizzard's doing. I think they have like four devs, and I think they have their heads up their own asses so far. They've lost track of what the spirit of the season was supposed to be. Also, Diablo 4 has been nothing but a constant, relentless disappointment. <laughs> Much like Bethesda. Blizzard, uh... I don't know what they're doing. May you find all that you seek, traveler. I'm skeptical. I'll watch as it gets closer. That's how I feel, too. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. Yeah, Bethesda and Blizzard are both on a crash course. It's like they're racing each other to see who can be uh, the most failed, beloved company first. <laughs> it's like they're in a fucking direct contest with one another. To see uh, who can piss off more people. There we go. Western AAA gaming in general. You're not wrong. It's all it's all uh, next quarter profit driven now, right? Ubisoft too. They seem to uh, also want in on the race to wor <laughs> worst big developer these days. Don't even get me started on EA as a, warm welcome as a whole. You. Uh, hey, train me in restoration, please. We'll do it up to, I don't know, 91, maybe? Where, where the fuck did this guy go? <laughs> he just peaced out. There he is. That guy looks familiar. This is expensive. We welcome you freely, Adlander. Okay, there we go. Good. Let's turn in these two quests we did. And we're done. Capcom. Yeah, um... 
I don't know. I, I still have some degree of faith in Capcom, but yeah. Koei Tecmo. Let's talk about fucking Koei. Because I gotta say, to see you. every you game they make services. are games that I loved when I was younger. Dynasty Warriors 3 was like the best fucking game ever. And then they had the Samurai Warriors game and they had the Warriors Orochi line, right? Dynasty Warriors 9 was an absolute fucking travesty. It was real bad. Hey, hey what are you up to? Oh uh, yeah, they were pretty good. Huh. Yeah, the cheese congealed, but other than that, it was good. Yeah, on oh, my uh, lunch break. Mm, cool. Um, read your messages when you get a chance. My Facebook messages? Yeah, your mom's trying to buy us a, um, what you call it, a table and chairs. Down here? Yeah, and she wants some extra money and then... Yeah. All right, I'll have to deal with that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> Okay, I'll have to chat with her. Thank you. Yeah, the Dynasty Warriors uh, for PS1, I know. Dynasty Warriors 3 was like one of my favorite fucking games ever. And then 4 was even better, and 5 was even better. And 6 was whatever. And 7 was pretty bad. And 8 was incredible, if you were still playing by then. And then 9 comes around, and it's like they lost their fucking mind. We're going to make an, an open-world Dynasty Warriors game, which was fucking empty, by the way. It was awful. Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires was actually okay, um, but that's not the point. And then the um, the last Warrior Orochis and Samurai Warriors 5 was the worst Samurai Warriors they've ever made. Came out in 2022, I think, like two years ago, two or three years ago. I don't know what the fuck they're thinking. Hmm, actually, I actually have to go back up. Like, Koei Tecmo has lost their fucking minds. And they can afford to be so lazy, too. They don't need to reinvent the wheel. I mean... Dynasty Warriors is not a complicated game. <laughs> Just improve the graphics, improve the engine, and people will will buy it and play it. I don't know. They they've Good lost their minds. Outlander. Looking for a bargain. Corpus Stalker. Done. Killed it. 500 gold. Thank you. Rel's Tenum. Done. Killed him. 200. I love how he gives me 200 septums for the 10 times harder quest. <laughs> Okay, okay, bro. Okay, boomer. We get a load of Sujama. Okay. The open world endless content meme needs to end, and games like Armored Core 6 prove that. Yeah, no, the, the most successful games financially in the last four to five years have generally been story-driven, single-player, role-playing games. And we keep seeing that. Baldur's Gate just absolutely fucking dominated every award show. And uh, the Hogwarts Legacy game did extremely well, right? And Elden Ring fucking killed it just across the board. Won a ton of awards for that, too. Armored Core, of course, did super well, too. Tashi C, yeah, with those two Tonfas, the two the two big things. Uh, Gan Ning was pretty bad, too, when he was still a pirate lord before they ruined him. Um, but yeah, no, the, the kind of Last of Us kind of single player. Yeah, Gan Ning was goaded. Um, and then Soon Say, too, the, the little one, he had some really cool moves. Single player, story driven, um, Forbidden West, right? That just came out? What, what's the name of that game? Um, there were, there was two of them. What was the name of that game? With the red-headed archer that kills all the giant robot dinosaurs. Horizon Zero Dawn, that's it, right? Horizon did extremely well. There, there is definitely an appetite for these kind of single-player, narrative-driven role-playing games. They Over and over again, they're crushing out um, all the award shows. They're crushing out sales. Uh, the Ghost of Tsushima, right? Huge. What a, what a success that game was. It had like a $40 million budget and it made like $390 million. It, it fucking killed it. It made over $300 million in profit. And not even counting the little indie games that have been killing it lately. Valheim, the fucking exploded. Hades, exploded. Ori and the Blind Forest, exploded. Pal World was made for, what, like $200,000 by four dudes in a fucking basement? Just made $50 million? 7 million people playing it on Steam at the same time? Like, these, these little indie games are killing it also. Lost uh, Last Epoch, the first... Uh, action RPG game, the isometric that that company's ever made. Little indie dev crew of like 11 people killing Diablo 4. Everybody's playing Last Epoch instead of the New Path of Exile for freaking League even because the New Path of Exile League is awful. 
So there's an appetite. You don't have to spend a, a fortune to make really good games that people want to play. The indie developers are proving that over and over again. And like the, the new um, God of War, Ragnarok, right? Sold like fucking 9 million copies. Yeah, exactly. They want they want um, games that are always online, right? Live service kind of games with microtransactions and subscriptions and everything along those lines. That's what the big push has been because they're easier to monetize. That's exactly what it is. It's just capitalism fucking ruining the gaming industry. But there's more to it than that because you can see that some of these relatively cheap games to produce have sold a ton of units and that's very profitable. That it's working for some of these indie devs. I don't know how long it's going to take for the gaming community, the developer community especially, to realize that the games that are doing the best commercially right now are the story-driven, you know, single-player RPG sort of games. I don't know how much FromSoft made with Elden Ring, but I'm sure it was a ton of fucking money, and they're about to sell a DLC for $40 that 10 million people are going to buy. <laughs> I mean, they're printing money too. So, um... It's, it's kind of a shame that the gaming industry seems to uh, want to head in, in a different, very predatory direction for this. Uh, games like Genshin Impact, right, are, are part of the problem. Relatively cheap game to produce that, that's making, like, $2 billion a year. Did you know that the Genshin Impact devs are now, like, the 11th most profitable country on Earth? <laughs> like, they're making more money than General Electric is now. Mm-hmm. Yep, Larian's uh, CEO, and even Grinding Gear games, too, of Path of Exile, their their CEO is very um, insightful. He has a lot of insight into the industry. But the big guys, you know, the big guys are all fucking corrupted with this we-need-to-maximize-profit-for-the-next-quarter sort of a very capitalist, predatory mindset. It's a shame. And watching Bioware and Blizzard and Bethesda and Ubisoft and these uh, these developers that I grew up playing these games and really had a, a strong affinity for, watching them all just kind of get murdered by their own capitalist impulses has been sad. It's sad to see. I have zero hope for The Elder Scrolls Six. I have very little hope for the next WoW expansion. I, I'm very concerned about uh, Blizzard. <laughs> very concerned. Diablo Four has been fucking awful. Um, so that's sad. There's no StarCraft Three coming, as far as we know. Overwatch is essentially dead. Heroes of the Storm is dead. Um, Blizzard is fucked at this point, and Bethesda seems fucked too. After Fallout 76 and Starfield, there's no hype for anything Bethesda could possibly make at this point. It's, uh, it's sad. It's sad to see. I did hear that Dynasty Warriors 10 is coming out September 2024, so let's see if Koei Tecmo pulls their head out of their ass. I'd say it was around 2010, 2012, yeah. Um, Activision isn't what killed Blizzard. Uh, King. King Digital is what killed Blizzard, because Activision bought them both. And Activision bought King, and they bought Blizzard, and King made Candy Crush, and Candy Crush Saga, and King started making two, three billion dollars a year off a fucking Facebook game. And WoW was, was just bleeding subs and making less and less money. And I think once Activision realized that mobile gaming and King Digital was making twice the money that Blizzard was, and Blizzard had something like 20,000 fucking employees and tons of overhead and, and a massive amount of server costs and stuff associated with it, uh, Activision made the obvious choice. <laughs> they made the obvious choice, and they leaned hard into the uh, the King Digital business model, the live service, microtransaction, mobile gaming, gotcha sort of thing. It, you can't really blame them on one hand, but I think that if Activision had just bought Blizzard, things would have been okay. Um, but King Digital absolutely killed it with like Farmville and Candy Crush and all these wild Facebook games around 2010, 2012. And um, that proved to the world, it proved to everybody exactly where gaming was headed. Sucks. I actually, I blame King for Blizzard's downfall. Not directly, of course, but indirectly. It Candy Crush killed World of Warcraft, <laughs> if you want to make that argument, but uh, that's that's what I think. Wild. <laughs> okay. I think that'll be the end of this episode. I might do another episode later today of Morrowind. Uh, we got a lot. We got a lot to do. I'd say we have another couple hours of um, Fighters Guild quests before we're done the Fighters Guild, and then we have to beat the Thieves Guild, and then we have to do the Morag Tong. Thanks, Gray. And um, then we have to do the main quest, so we, we, <laughs> we haven't started the main quest yet. So we have a long way to go with this Let's Play. We have a lot to do still. But um, I'm going to take a break, 
head back this uh, this evening maybe and, and continue with the fighter skill. Thank you both for joining me. It was nice talking to you again, Gretzky. It's been a little while since we've spoken um, because I haven't I haven't been playing WoW much. So and that's usually where we we play games together. So I'll catch you guys later.